it has gone on. Let's pray unto the Father God before I speak any message. Uh, dear Heavenly Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you. As I said, let your Holy Spirit come upon us and help me to speak unto all of us, including myself. Father God, help me to speak your word and help us to be changed and, and be awakened by the word of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, today I do want to talk to you about the spiritual warfare. It's real and it's very vicious. And it's very violent part of our life. The Bible does say in Matthew 11, uh, ch chapter 11, verse 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent one takes it by force. You know, there's a battle, there's a real spiritual battle that is very severe that the devil is always trying to catch the moment of weakness to attack you even though you may be a minister or a servant of God even after you preach you should go and pray and you must go and pray or else the devil comes in very quickly from the days of Adam and Eve okay when God asked Adam to watch the garden watch over the garden right what happens the devil comes in sneak in I don't know what Adam was doing maybe not watching the snake I'm not sure what he was doing but anyway he came in and deceived Eve his family his wife and guess what from that moment curses began do you understand and then Eve was deceived because she didn't know the word God fully okay she kind of knew it she didn't know it fully she said you might die no you are gonna die the devil tricked her in that weakness of not knowing the word correctly. She was thinking, oh, you might die. I heard maybe you might. You know, the word of God was not, you will surely die, was the word of God. And, and, and of course, people changed the word of God. Oh, you know, when Jesus says, cut off your arm, it doesn't really mean that, you know, when he says, you know, pluck out your eye, oh, how can you pluck out your eye? Because then what Jesus means is really what it means. If it really causes you sin, just take it out. It is better for you to have no arm, no eyeball, no feet, and enter into the kingdom of God than to have all those body parts and that your whole body be thrown into hellfire. It's a real place, guys. It's a real place. And what causes was a sin causes you to depart from the Lord and it cuts off your relationship with the Lord unless you repent of your sins and come back to the Lord. But people, of course, they say, no, one saved is always saved. Who told you that? Where is that verse in the Bible? There's no such phrase as one saved, forever always saved. There's no phrase such as this. But the Bible speaks about the opposite, that you can lose your salvation. Bible talks about that in Hebrews chapter 6 and 10. Once the, the uh, person's enlightened of the God, and if he happens to, you know, and, and taste the Holy Spirit and taste the powers to come, and if they fall away, there's no way to renew them back to repentance because they crucified Jesus Christ a second time. You know, the Moses, right, story, that the, the Israel people coming out of Egypt represents our life right now. Okay, in the wilderness, we are in that wilderness. And in that place, they're eating manna that came from him. We are reading the word of God and drinking from the water when, when Moses struck the rock and water sprang up. These people, devil came in and deceived their mind to go back to Egypt style of living. And they start making, you know, golden cows and bowing down, worshiping false gods, and committing sexual fornications. They're complaining against a spiritual authorities, like how you'd be complaining about your pastors and deacons and whatever, you know, all these ministers of God, how you're complaining about them, you know, bad-mouthing them, and, and they fought against, they, they went against God, complained against God, and God destroyed them, all of, the, all of them, except two. Okay, Caleb and Joshua, and the rest of them were newborns except the new horns. But, but all of them got, including Moses couldn't go in because Moses 
struck the rock twice. This rock represented Jesus Christ and he, he struck it first because God told him to struck it first time. Second time when they needed water, Moses was commanded from God to speak unto the rock and it will produce water. But he didn't speak, he struck it twice. There was a disobedience to God. And because of that, God told Moses, you cannot enter into the promise. That represents us. If you're enlightened, drinking, drunken of the Holy Spirit of God, and you go back to your wicked sins again and again and again, there is no way for you to come back. You know? If you go, go to a harlot and things like that, there, are, there may be no way to come back. But if there is a way, you should come back. Do you understand? If you taste the powers of the heavens to come and fall back, there's no way to renew you. So you need to awake. It, even, even it goes through the whole story in the Bibles, right? Look at King David. King David became a king. He became, he overcame all the hardships. Like some of you overcame all the hardships and God said, said King David as king and he's just, he's just having victories over the world and now he's just relaxing. Like how you might be relaxing. Oh, well, I saved so many people. I delivered so many, so many, oh, did, did cast out demons, whatever. And then what happened? He got prideful. He got lazy with praying and seeking God and guess what the devil comes right in as a snake and then tempts David to commit fornic uh, not, adultery with Bathsheba okay and then the devil comes and is already in there and then he's telling uh, King David yeah just uh, kill he says you know what can you do kill that uh, husband of her okay just kill that husband and then becomes a murderer and you, you're talking about King David, who was so close to God, who wrote the Psalms, who God set it upon as an anointed king of Israel, who was supposed to represent, you know, like Jesus figure, a king of Israel, right? And then all this high place, and then he becomes an adulterer, and in, in the end, he, he even dies early, and um, he, he's just... His whole family is just all cursed. They're all killing each other because of his murder that he had done, you know. And the adultery, his, his concubines get raped by his own son. Do you understand? That's kind of horrible things happen to King David. And does that happen to modern day Christians who are ministers of God? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You, if, you, if, the, if you're a minister of God, and if you don't intercede for your wife, your kids, your children, you don't pray for them every day, you don't intercede for them, guess what? The devil's gonna come in, right in, and corrupt whichever one is open to corrupt. They're gonna break down your marriage. Devils come to divide you and to break down your marriage, to curse your family, to curse your finances, curse everything that you have. Like Job. Job was the most righteous guy. And I don't know whether he was, you know, uh, doing a little bit things wrong like not punishing his children or not, or, or what what the cause is but the devil came in and then took all of his sons and daughters they, God allowed them to be all killed okay his whole wealth got stolen away uh, by, by well, Chaldeans or whatever those, the, those people attacked and stolen away okay his wife left him okay and he was had a horrible skin disease that he was scraping his soul itchy so he's scraping and he's just on the floor like in, in, in sackcloth and ashes you, you, you have no idea you have no idea about you becoming spiritually lazy at any moment the devil comes in right away a lot of ministers they get pr prideful and, then, and they don't even know it because they're casting out they think they're doing God's will but you know what they don't even have the authority of Jesus Christ to begin with they didn't even receive any power to begin with, and they're just doing it and it's just a show and they become super prideful, super arrogant. They're not cursing. Cursing, they become very fierce and anger-driven. They're very wrathful. They become sons of the devil. The pride themselves. They really become devil themselves. And they don't even know. You have to understand. The devil comes and destroys all those families. Hey, do you think, you know, Katy Perry? Do you know her parents are ministers? They're supposed to be pastors and ministers, huh? She's corrupted. 
Dave Chappelle, same thing. Her, her mother is minister. Okay? Who said? Huh? Jason, Beyonce? Her parents is also pastors and uh, ministers. Okay? What happened to why are they sold their souls to the devils and dancing with the devils and, and, and doing drugs and you know all that money hungry stuff? They don't know their parents from their parents. They don't know the spiritual battle is, is real. A lot of pastors, their sons and daughters, they're committing a lot of crimes, drinking, binging, whatever, and their fathers are ministers, pastors. What in the world happened to them? They need to, to be awake and fighting and always be watching that there's an enemy looking to devour you. Let's, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse uh, 8. Let's go there. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom to devour. He's looking whom to eat up, whom to scare, whom to eat up, whom to destroy. If you don't watch, as, even as a Christian, you know how many Christian families are so broken down, divorced, and they don't intercede for their spouses. They don't intercede for their children. Kanye West, for example, his mother is a faithful Christian. What happened to him? There must have been a, a strong prayers uh, from their church, from their mother, interceding for her children every day. And they didn't. And they don't. So what happens? The devil comes in right up. Destroys them. Destroys their purity. Destroys their culture. And makes them worldly. Makes them love money. Makes them love sex and drugs and alcohol. And, and all the entertainments. You're a Christian and you're watching movies and entertaining yourself. You're already taken by the devil okay just because your ministry is huge huge doesn't mean nothing you could be doing the devil's will because look catholics is huge they have so much members in catholic church are aren't they a cult yes they are aren't they corrupted oh, you talk about corruption you talk about you know wickedness yeah they're 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 really like worshiping satan in the vatican and stuff okay you talk about uh, whatever, all the other cults, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, all these other cults. Huh? They might have started as a believer of Jesus, a pure believer of Jesus. Guess what happened? The devil comes in right in and says, tells these leaders, no, 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 it's not, this is not the gospel. You're, I'll make you whatever, a prophet, I'll make you this. And they really think they heard God. But without even praying and seeking and checking, they think they heard God and they're totally deceived. Look at Muhammad with Islam. Okay, that is a cult. That is a huge cult. And that guy thought he was a prophet. After the lineage of Jesus. Do you, do you understand? After the Torah, after the, 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 the Gospels. And became Mus Muslim, Islam. Do you understand? You, you have no idea. There's this a guy that I knew, okay? I was warning him to pray and stuff like that. He doesn't. And he just plays his video games all day long. And then one day, he, right now he's, he's totally cuckoo right now. Okay? He says he's like, God told him he's, he's the son of God. Okay? There's these people that, that once got baptized and they went on, and right away pride came in and, and, and really just made them so prideful and demonized and prideful and, and just, they think they're just casting out demons all day long doing God's will. But they're so prideful that they don't, they don't even see it. I, 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 one, one little criticism, one little thing will blow them up. And they will like criticize everybody else, but they're so perfect and holy and right in, in their own eyes. You need to watch out. Because the devil comes in right after you think you did God's will. That comes right after. Look at Peter, for example. Peter had the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, 
the Messiah that they're waiting for. And Jesus praised, praised Peter, said, Oh, Peter, you are, you know, God, the Father revealed unto you this thing. And, and on this rock, Peter, this Peter, I'll build my church. And the, the gates, and I'll give the keys of the uh, gates of hell, and the, no, no gates of hell shall prevail against it. And he became, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm pretty high. You know, I, high up there. And then now Jesus talks about, oh, he needs to get crucified. And then Peter said, no, 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 you cannot get crucified. And then Jesus, the same Jesus that just praised Peter, rebukes Jesus, uh, rebukes Peter, saying, get thee behind Satan. One moment ago, okay, a moment ago, Peter had a revelation from God. A moment later, he has a revelation from Satan. Do you understand? And Jesus rebukes Peter because you're mindful of the things of men. You know, get thee behind thee, Satan. Do you understand? Do you get it? You know, there's a Gideon army. Gideon army in the Bible, they had about 20,000 people. God said, I don't need all that stuff. Let's test these people out. And he got rid of all the people who were scared. So there's only 10,000 people left. No, there were 30 people, 30,000 to begin with. Anyway, 10,000 left. And as a this is too much, let's test them out. And he brings them to the uh, uh, river. And then they're just... People are just dunking their heads into the water to drink. But there are some people who are watchful of the enemy. They're watching and watching, 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 and, and just sipping the water on their head. And God says, these 300 people are able to fight my war. Those who are watchful constantly, no matter what. Of course, there might have been no enemy. They don't see anybody. They don't see nothing. Huh? They don't see nobody. There are no enemies in this place. Okay? And they're just, ah, oh, there's no, nobody. And they're just drinking, drinking, drinking water because they're so thirsty. They're fulfilling their flesh. And guess what? Devil, I mean, not the, the people who are only watchful constantly, no matter how peaceful the time looks, no matter how well it looks, they're constantly watching and watching. And this represents people we're constantly praying, constantly seeking God, constantly, you know, pray, praying up, being filled with the Holy Spirit, asking God's will. You know, in the church, there may be worship is great, the sermon is great, and everybody just worshiping God, like uh, people getting saved, and then the pastor goes, oh, yeah, I guess I can take a break today. I'll go, let's go watch a movie tonight. Uh, uh, let's go do a movie night today, and then takes a break. Devil comes in right into them, gives them the lust of money, lust of the world, love of the world, and they get slowly corrupted. And they don't even know that they got corrupted. They don't even know. They think it's all okay. So they start buying expensive cars. They used to sleep in motels, but that's not enough. They need to go to sleep in the five-star hotels now. What happened to them? They got corrupted by the devil. The devil sold that third you know, the, the third seed that sowed onto the ground, there are four seeds, right? The third one that, that was sown into uh, <clears throat> thorny ground, right? Thorny, thorny place. It starts growing up and then the cares and the lust of this world, the love of money, chokes the word and makes it unfruitful. It was fruitful. It might was bearing fruit before and then they become unfruitful. This is a revelation that God gave me through a dream. Okay, when I, when I um, barely entered into heaven, I barely entered into heaven. And God gave me that dream and gave me that verse. And you need to be constantly watching. Constantly. I have a wife and she's preaching to some Chinese members. And then she's preaching. And then it went very well. She felt, she said, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me. And I felt the anointing was so strong and stuff like that. And, and it seemed like these people were really listening and, and being changed by the Word of God to believe in God and, and to be saved and things like that. And I was like, for great. You know, and then she goes and I was like, you know what? Uh, I have my mom's car. I'm going to go uh, uh, perm my hair. And then she goes to, you know, so it's like, okay, you know. And then go, go. Then she went to perm her hair. And then... And then she doesn't, she doesn't pray. She doesn't pray. Okay. 
and then she's even evangelizing to the to the stylist about Jesus Christ, and she just evan evangelizes to them. And then you know the perm takes about three hours. I said, like, "Did you pray?" I was like, "Yeah, I was praying a little bit, and then I got kind of tired, so I was like looking at my cell phone for the rest of the two hours." And then you know what happened? Oh, she got prideful all of a sudden. The devil came in. She got prideful all of a sudden, and then guess what? She started arguing with me because I said, "I don't want to go back." I'll just be praying for you. I don't want to go back. She started arguing with me. She started whatever. And then in the taxi, we're taking a two-hour taxi back home. And then she left her bag with all the info important information in it and left it there, I guess. Uh, and I, and it's she, just like, so, so I was like, hey, you need to pray. You need to pray if you wanted the bag back. Praying that she was so angry, so, so pissed off at me and everybody and everything that she didn't pray. Guess what? Did she find the bag? No, it's gone. Do I know that uh, maybe the taxi guy sold? Probably. But I warned her. And I warned her again. I said, you need to. You don't, it's like you don't understand what spiritual battle is. You don't understand. The minute that you're lazy with God, that's when the devil attacks. You think you had a video. You should have gone right after you preach, right after your evangelism. Even me, even after I make the video, I need to go back to prayer right away. Or else I'm wide open for the devil's attack. Do you understand? You know, why do you think that Jesus had to go pray every night and go up in the mountain every night? No? And he had it as a habit. It's just, it's just a thing that he does. You know, heal, sick, okay, preach, and then go right away to pray. Why does he do that? He knows the devil's schemes. He knows that he cannot give any room to the devil. He says, don't give any room to the devil. There are two things fighting. There are two things fighting and then you need to know the flesh, the spirit is warring against each other. It's a war. It's a battle. They're fighting. They're like fighting. Okay? Your spirit, uh, combined with God's Holy Spirit, is fighting against the flesh and whichever is stronger is going to win. Okay? If your spirit is not being prayed up, is not awake, is sleeping, the flesh will overcome and say, I feel tired. Today, I don't feel like praying. Today, I don't feel like, huh? I don't feel this, I don't feel this, I don't feel that, I don't feel that. You don't go by feeling, you go by faith. And faith is the Word of God. And doing the Word of God is faith that is alive. Not doing the Word of God is a dead faith. You have a dead faith if you don't even do the Word of God. Do you understand? It's a death faith what you have. And then, guess what? Their feeling overtakes. Oh, today I want to go watch a movie. I want to eat this. And I want to be... Uh, and then it comes a time when you need to sleep. And say, so, oh, I'm so tired. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just pray five minutes. And then sleep. And then if I pray one minute and it goes to sleep, the devil right away attacks them. They don't even know. They don't even know. They enjoy all their food and it's killing them. There's no control. You know, the Bible does say, you know, it's like, hey, watch these foods that make you fat and, you know, that, that slow down your body, you know, avoid these animal fats, animal stuff, Start, stop eating all those pork, chicken, all these, all these fatty things, you know, but focus, you know, on the Lord and you should be awake and rather, you know, take care of your body, your temple too, right? Your body is your temple of God and you should put in, not garbage, junk, junk stuff, but you should put in with fruits and vegetables and 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 you know kosher meat or uh, not kosher meat but just you know meat without fat a lot of fat in there like pork avoid that stuff if Jesus killed it kill those two let those two thousand pigs just drop into the water and die and you should, maybe you shouldn't eat pork I don't know you know maybe well, why does why does God make a law of Moses and the law represents sin and there are those things that you shouldn't you know eat of course, now we can give all thanks to God and eat those things if it doesn't offend other people, if you're your you're faith. But does it mean you're going to stay healthy? You can eat all the junk of the world and you're going to expect to live 120? I tell you, no. You're going to get sick. Your heart's going to get clogged with cholesterol. I mean, oh, you're going to pray it away? You know how many ministers of God 
they die like age 60, 70, 50, you know. I don't know how Billy Graham, but he just died like 100 or something out of him. Anyway, you know, but people die early with a lot of heart diseases that slow them down, that age them quicker, that whatever, and people don't watch out for nothing. And they think, oh, just faith, faith, faith. And, and they people die. A lot of Christians, they're talking about faithful Christians. In their 60s, 50s, they have a bunch of disease. They're taking a whole bunch of drugs, a whole bunch of uh, medic medications, and have like all kinds of diseases. Wasn't God not the healer? Yeah, God is a healer. And these people, do they believe? Yeah, they do believe. But why are they not living healthy? They're just going against the natural law that God has set. And then he's, he, he made these things so that now we find out hey, oh, those foods that God told them don't eat is actually bad for you. It's a high cholesterol, high junk, high whatever. It makes you slow down and dumb and ugly and all these kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, Daniel ate the fruits and vegetables and their faces were so bright, so clean, uh, no acne, whatever, and they're, they're pretty and they're nice looking uh, more than all the other guys who are eating porks and all these kind of junk food. They're very tasty, they're very nice looking, but what in the end happens? Daniel, they're, they're so wise, so smart, the, the Daniel and three friends who chose not to eat those uh, foods but to eat the kosher way, kosher way of the Israel people. Okay, they are staying very healthy and smart and, and above all anointed of God. So, I don't know, it's up to you, you know. These people just think that faith is just, just believing or something. Faith is reading the word and doing the word and living the way with self-control. And, and if you have anger problem, Bible says, you know, you need to repent of these problems, the, the, the fleshly deeds, fleshly acts. Bible says, what is love? I said, love, 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 love. Love is long suffering. That means you suffer long time. In the physical flesh, you suffer long suffer. If it takes fasting, shift fast. Huh? Praying, does it, does it hurt your body? Then pray. It is suffering. It's partly suffering. But in that suffering, there is a glory of God. Because out of the weakness of, the, of your flesh, then there is a glory of God. So, you know, take my advice and really put it into practice if you believe in the Word of God. I'm not telling I've been doing this for, for 10 years. The only way that I survived without getting my faith killed and destroyed, and I did sometimes get my faith destroyed, whenever I stopped praying, stopped seeking God, or whenever I got prideful in any way. And in the midst of it, I was, I was evangelizing. In the midst of that. I was telling them about Jesus. I was preaching. I was, you know, praying for people. In the midst of that. So did that, did that save me from those problems? No, I was chastised of God because I didn't keep myself diligent in prayer and seeking God first. And sometimes I didn't keep myself being humble. Humble is saying, I need God, Jesus, every moment. Being hungry for Jesus, you know, being poor in spirit, really needing the Lord God morning you know seeking the lord in deep prayers praying for your members praying for them you know i was not so diligent and then they all flew away the devil just picked one by one and ate them all so please learn and please start praying interesting you should have a list of people that you're interceding for wake up early in the morning overcome that flesh overcome that flesh and pray at least, if you're ministers of God, two hours of prayer is not enough. That's for a normal believer who doesn't even evangelize. If you want to live well, then pray for about two hours every day. Every day! You cannot skip a day. If you, the, the moment you skip a day is when the devil attacks. And I, I, I'm telling you by experience, from 10 years of experience, I'm telling you it's going to happen. And if you don't think that's happening, you, you probably already are useless to God. You, know, you you probably already uh, are not even living God's will 
you don't even remember hearing God's voice or whatever, that's far, far away already, and God stopped using you, and you're just destroyed in your life, and you will be destroyed more and more, the, the more you forsake praying unto God and seeking His face and putting that priority in your life. Because that's number one rule. It says, love God with all your heart, all your strength, all your soul. But people are not doing that. So they don't pray. They don't seek God. They don't read the Word. And just, they don't pray. They pray five minutes and think it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Huh? Then Jesus would say, disciples, oh, you didn't pray one hour yet? Oh, that's okay. Go keep on sleeping. No, but Jesus said, get up and pray. Because the flesh is weak. Spirit is willing. Your spirits are willing, but your flesh is weak. He said, get up and pray. And they did it, and they, they, they forsook Jesus. They, they lost the battle. They all ran away from God. They denied Jesus and things like that. So, you have to understand, it doesn't matter, you know. After Judas got tricked by the devil, and he was a 12th disciple. Huh? He was within that 12 disciples of God. And, and was, he, was he being used by Jesus? Yeah, he was taking control of the money. That means God put a finances job on him, on him. And he got greedy. Why? The devil came in, of course. And tricked him. And so with a lot of ministers with a lot of money hungriness, I don't understand. You are deceived. But Bible clearly, clearly says, clearly says, okay, the rich cannot, it is a harder for the uh, camel. It is, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. It's impossible. In James chapter 5, Woe unto the riches for their, uh, uh, you know, clothes are moth-eaten, their, 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 their gold and silver are rusting, and that's a, that's a symbol that that's, that's against them. Then they don't know. Unless you're a, a, a crazy giver of your money and then you don't live in luxury, you know, unless you're doing that, then richness is a curse to you because it takes your heart away from God. And it's like these people who love the world and your Christians is watching movies, TVs, internet, you need to cut it off. You chop that off and just break it and just break your computer, break your cell phone that takes your heart away from, from God. You just throw it into garbage can. Or sell it and give that money to the poor, whichever. Okay? It's one life to live. And I'm telling you, majority of the churches today they're all dead and a lot of Christians don't even know that they're going to hell they don't even know you guys don't even know you guys even don't even understand the spiritual battle that you're already being defeated if you don't stay in the presence of God and praying the ministers of God should at least pr pray three four five hours Every day, if they're evangelizing anything, if they're if they're doing the work of God, or else the devil will come and destroy in the parts of the places where you're open for attack. God will be destroying it, even though you evangelize, even though you heal the sick, even though you cast out demons or preach unto the people or whatever did you think you did. It doesn't even matter if you don't stay continually in prayer after you've done those things. It doesn't even matter. The devil's gonna come and the devil's gonna get you. And then make your make your make your life corrupted and, and useless for God. I'm telling you the truth. So wake up and don't don't be like, oh why did all these bad things happen? I've been evangelized. How come the devil uh, stole this and break up my family? Oh how come the devil still and, and messed my finances? Oh the devil, the devil. Where were you? Bring and protecting yourself with the full armor of God. Where were you? Uh, and most of all, you know, the, the, the last the verses, most of praying always in the Spirit. Huh? What happened to you? Why aren't you wearing the full armor of God? Oh, the Word of God, the sword. Yeah, I read the Word. Oh, but what about the prayer? Praying always in the Spirit. Uh, what, are you even praying in tongues? Oh, yeah, I have to get by. I pray maybe five, ten minutes. Is that enough? I don't want to be, you know, really like, but but that's not enough. According to my experience, hey, it's not enough. 
most of them are distorted and they don't even know and they still think they have you know they have like the gift of prophecy next thing they hear devil voice and they don't even discern they cannot even discern because their battery is going low their self their 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 battery is running low their anointing is running low their oil is running out and guess what the devil comes and they start prophesying devil stuff and they think that they're pro pro prophets and evangelists and all these kind of high high-minded names apostle this apostle that hey, you don't even pray five six hours and every day and you don't even have a disciplined life of interceding for people you're not even nothing you just go back to a beginner go back to a normal christian be happy with that literally because there are many pastors in hell many evangelists a lot of them okay and they're crying out lord 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 why am i here why am i here unless you know the will of God, it will destroy you. So, get wisdom, be wise. Be wise like the snake. What does that mean? Why do you be wise like a The snake is very cunning. If you're not as wise as the snake that is trying to deceive you, you will be able to fight the devil's thoughts. And you should be as wise as the snake. You should know his plans, how he works. He works with pride. Okay, he, he gets you in arrogance. He gets you in, in sinning. He gets you in, in your lack of prayer life. He bites all those places that you're opening doors to. He bites you all those places in your love of the world of any kind. He bites in all those places. And be wise as a snake. Know that, oh, he's going to bite in those places. So don't do those things. Cut those things off. Oh, hope you guys take the advice. And really really just you know in the day you don't even know don't be so sure work out your salvation with fear and trembling philippians chapter 2 12 understand and, and really make it to heaven okay that is your priority pray for your families pray for your church members pray for your pastors and evangelists whatever pray for them or else they won't be able to even stand let's pray dear heavenly father god thank you father god for your word, I ask that your Holy Spirit, please, Lord, change us and mold us to be more like you. And Father, to be disciplined and to be always watching and knowing that this we are fighting is a real battle. Help us to be victorious in it and help us to really overcome this flesh that doesn't want to pray, that doesn't want to seek God, that doesn't want to submit to God, that always want to be high-minded and prideful. Help us to kill this flesh and be nothing before you and be no one, be nothing before you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the praise and glory on your name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God bless you.